this is a drawing from the wall pond segregation one of the rooms uh, housed there uh, this is an inside sketch of one of the solitary confinement cells uh, they're building a cell a, a replica of the cell located there in wall pond Solitary confinement is torture, okay? The noise you hear in this, uh, in this uh, replica is the noise that the actual, it's close to the actual noise that you hear in solitary confinement. And the actual solitary confinement is louder than this because the person who's making all the noise may be right next to you. So you hear all these noises and then some of the guys commit suicide, attempted suicide goes on at least once a month. When I was in solitary, two guys died on uh, 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 suicide due to this racket, noise, uh, and the treatment that they, that they got from the uh, prison guard. We're here today to talk about solitary confinement. We're here today to talk about torture. The Department of Corrections is out of control. It is the largest agency in state government with a budget of more than a billion dollars a year. Yet it routinely engages in torture as a management practice and as treatment for mental illness. By United Nations standards, to keep a person in solitary confinement for more than 15 days is torture. In 2012, the Department of Corrections kept 4,000 inmates in solitary confinement for more than 30 days. With all that money, with all that power, with all those employees, with all that public trust, the best, the best Ed Wall and Scott Walker can do is torture a quarter of the people that they're responsible to care for. They have wasted our money, they have abused their power, they have broken faith with the good people who work in the Department of Corrections and know, and know, this is not the way you treat your fellow human beings. Yeah. And they have violated the trust of the people of Wisconsin. In early August, we called to inquire about visiting him. The staff told us that he had been moved to the from the Columbia Corrections Institution in Portage to the Wisconsin Resource Center near Oshkosh. We were initially very happy about this change because we had heard 
that it was the one facility where inmates get good psychiatric care. However, when we finally got the opportunity to visit him on August 10th, we were shocked to find him delusional and paranoid, completely psychotic. He was sickly thin with curly matted hair and dressed in a suicide smock. For 10 minutes, he spoke to us in gibberish. He looked and acted like a wild man who had just emerged from the jungle. As we reflect on Aaron's terrible condition, we are baffled by the fact that when he was losing his grip on reality, the DOC kept him in solitary confinement and cut him off from contact with us and any sense of reality. Aaron has significant cognitive deficits, but when he entered the state prison system, he was a sane person. That is no longer true. Inadequate care and the torture in solitary confinement, more than four months this last time, have pushed him over the psychotic edge. He is living proof of the fact that solitary confinement is ineffective as a way of improving inmate behavior, a conclusion that was known way back in the late 1800s, yet it has been brought back into widespread use in the 1980s. We are very frustrated because due to his privacy rights, the staff will not communicate with us about his condition or his treatment. So he has no one advocating for him. And he's supposed to be released in nine and a half months. Uh, he wrote me a note and said, Mom, happy anniversary. I've been in prison for over seven years. I cried. He laughed. The psychiatrist said he's now paranoid schizophrenic. I wonder why. He's been in segregation for six years and 51 weeks. Since he's been in segregation, I've seen bruises on his face and on his body. He's had a twisted knee. And the doctor said that it was because Someone had extremely twisted it. He's in a cell by himself, so how did that happen? At times, oh my gosh. At times when the guards would bring him his food, they would urinate it in it and slide it through the door. One summer it was very, very hot there. My son wouldn't wear clothes. And he'd asked the guards if they could take a shower. And they smiled and said, sure. While he was in the shower, he was supposed to be the only inmate in there. And the guards let other inmates in there to abuse my son. So many men and women live in SEG have mental illness and they're not getting the proper treatment, medications or mental health therapy, or just something simple as care and respect. Without proper treatment, the mentally ill will only get worse in prison, just like my son. God bless you all. And let it be known, we have too many people incarcerated and being treated inhumane to keep our mouths shut. So let's hear it. We share the stories that we've heard from our colleagues here today and I just, I'm so glad that you brought to life stories that we often hear about. But that's not where it must end. It must be the beginning of a co coalition justice-minded seeking organizations and individuals giving a voice to those lives who may not have a voice to speak for themselves. We must stand as human beings of all races, nationalities, religions, and stand against 
this immoral practice that has been practiced daily. And when it comes to elections, you're going to hear tough on crime. But what you should look at that is tough on human beings, which we were never taught to do. This country is sold on punishment and retribution, but it's bankrupt when it comes to recovery and reinstituting people back into society. Right now, as we stand on these steps, there are something like 1,400 or 1,500 men living in cells just like this in our state prisons. They're in these cells alone 23 or 24 hours a day. The prisoner eats in here, sleeps in here, and his toilet is only a few feet from his head. No windows, no sunlight, no idea what the weather is like outside, no moon or stars at night, but instead lights that you can never turn off. Solitary is not quiet. In fact, it's crazy loud almost all of the time. If you started out sane when you were put in one of these cells, you are quickly going to begin to lose track of your mind. If you started out mentally ill when you were put in this cell, then you're going to be in real trouble. Prison itself is punishment enough allowing people to be tortured in prison simply cannot go on. As a chaplain visiting people in the segregation units, I have personally heard this screaming and banging for hours. I have stood alone inside of one of the solitary confinement cells in what we used to call the Supermax in Boscobel. I know men very well, many men, who have spent literally, literally years inside of these cells. Men who at times, because they couldn't stand it anymore, have attempted suicide, and the response to that is to be given yet another year in solitary. I have said this many times, I'm going to keep saying it. What kind of world is this where self-harm and mental illness have become brutally punishable offenses? The use of solitary confinement by our Department of Corrections, paid for by our tax dollars, has spun violently out of control. We are the only people who can make a difference in this regard. We're the only people who can make real reform of this policy change. Please, for the men and the women who I know well, who have suffered under this for years and who continue to suffer right now, today, while we're standing here, please speak up keep speaking up and bring this torturous practice to an end. Thank you. But we are here today to say that we are serious about bringing about change in the prison system in Wisconsin. Because we intend to make sure that this momentum of today that's been building for the last two years will not end, but will continue until we have a radical transformation of the correctional system in the state of Wisconsin. Yes.